All right, today starts our third lesson on solving systems of equations. And we have looked at, on day one, we looked at graphing systems to find out where the two lines crossed, and that was the solution. On day two, we looked at solving systems by substitution, where we plugged in one equation to the other. And that let us know at what point the two lines were going to intersect. And today, we're going to look at solving systems by elimination, which is, again, going to tell us at what point on a graph these two lines, if we graphed them, were to intersect. So our first objective for today is to solve systems of linear equations in two variables by elimination. And our second variable is to write a system of equations for a contextual problem. All right, go ahead and write down this system of equations. You have 3x minus 4y equals 10, and x plus 4y equals negative 2. So yesterday we wrote them side by side, and today we're going to write them one over the other, and we're just going to make sure that they're aligned. So really and truly what I want you to think of this as is it's really no different than saying like 4 plus 4 equals 8, okay? That's the kind of thing we're doing. You've been aligning terms and adding and subtracting them since you were in elementary school, and I want you to think of that as we write this out. So don't, don't think of it as some intimidating process. So you've got 3x minus 4y equals 10. And then you're also going to put this underneath it. So you've got your x with an understood coefficient of 1, your plus 4y, and your equals negative 2. So the term elimination, which you know we're dealing with today because we've talked about that, elimination simply means to eliminate something. So what we've got to do here is look and see which term we're going to easily be able to eliminate, whether it's the x or the y. Eliminating just means it cancels. It's equal to zero. This is already pretty much done for us here. If you look, you have negative 4y and positive 4y. So these terms eliminate. You're just adding, again, like 4 plus 4 equals 8. 3 plus 1 equals 4x. Negative 4 plus 4 equals 0, so we cancel that out. And then 10 plus negative 2 equals 8. So I'm left with 4x equals 8, and I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to solve for x. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So x equals 2. It's that easy. Now I'm going to come back to one of my original equations and plug in to find out what y equals. So because x is already solved for in this one, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to say x plus 4y equals negative 2. And then I'm going to plug in my positive 2 for x. So I'm going to say 2 plus 4y equals negative 2. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. It's going to give me 4y equals negative 4. This cancels. Divided by 4, divided by 4, y equals negative 1. So I'm going to write that as an ordered pair. And again, this ordered pair is going to be the point on a graph where my two lines are going to intersect if I were to graph them. My ordered pair is negative 2. I'm sorry, positive 2, negative 1. I can plug that in to my original equations to check. And that's what I'm going to, going to do now. So I'm going to have 3x, which is 2, minus 4y, which is negative 1, equals 10. Negative 4 times negative 1 gives me positive 4. 3 times 6, I'm sorry, 3 times 2 gives me 6. So it's 6 plus 4 equals 10. 6 plus 4 does equal 10. 10 equals 10, and that checks. My other equation, x, again, is 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 plus 4, and then y is negative 1 equals negative 2. 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 4. 2 minus 4 gives me negative 2. And negative 2 equals negative 2. So that does check. So make sure that you have all of this work and the check written down before you move on. You can pause the video now if you need time to get that down. All right, go ahead and write down number 2. Number 2 is y plus 3 equals negative 2. And negative 3x plus 2y equals 14. So the first step is I have to write 1 over the other. Um, again, it's just like 4 plus 4 equals 8. However, I want to go ahead and put my like terms together. I left out an x in the original problem. I'm so sorry. Put an x there after the 3. It should be 3x. y plus 3x equals negative 2. Um, 
Now I'm going to line up my X's and line up my Y's, and then my terms on the other side are going to stay on the other side of the problem. So let's go ahead and put our X's first. We're going to rewrite this first problem and say that it's the same thing, because it is the same thing as 3X plus Y equals negative 2. These are both positive, so if there's an understood plus sign in front of that Y, so it doesn't make any difference that I'm moving it around in the problem. Now, the second equation is negative 3x plus 2y equals 14. And now I'm just going to add down the page. So this 3x minus 3x is going to cancel or eliminate. So there is my elimination. That's gone. And I'm left with 1y plus 2y, which equals 3y. And then I have negative 2 plus 14, which gives me 12. So now I'm going to divide by 3 to solve for y. Divide both sides by 3, and it's going to give me y equals 4. So my y equals 4. I'm good to go with that. Now I'm going to plug in my y equals 4 to the original equation and find out um, what x equals. So I'm going to use this equation, y plus 3x equals negative 2, because my y is already solved for, and I know that I'm plugging in a 4 here. So I'm going to say 4 plus 3x equals negative 2 minus 4 on both sides, 3x equals negative 6, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and it's going to give me x equals negative 2. So I'm going to write that as an ordered pair, negative 2 comma 4. Again, my x always comes first in the ordered pair. And then I'm going to come back to my original equations, and I'm going to plug this in. So I have y, which is 4, plus 3x, which is negative 2, equals negative 2. 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. 4 plus 6 gives me negative 2. On the other side, I still have my negative 2, and that checks. My other equation, I'm going to plug in my x and my y. We're going to say negative 3 times x, which is negative 2, plus 2 times y, which is 4, equals 14. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6 plus 8, Bring down my equals 14. 6 plus 8 equals 14, which equals 14. So that checks out as well. So make sure that you have, sorry, I didn't realize I was off the page there. Make sure that you have both of those written down and the checks, all of the work and the checks written down. You can pause the video if you need to before you move on. All right, so the way that number 3 is written, go ahead and write this out. 2x plus y equals negative 5. And then 2x minus 5y equals 13. You may see very quickly here that this one kind of throws a wrench in our plan. This one is not already eliminating a variable just the way that it's been given to us. So we have to do something special here in order to go ahead and eliminate our variable. You can see here that your 2x and your 2x are equal. So that is what we're going to start working with. That's what we're going to eliminate. We're going to be able to eliminate the x, but we have to do something special first. So I want you to go ahead and write your problems out one over the other, just like we have been. 2x plus y equals negative 5, and 2x minus 5y equals 13. Now, in order to make this these 2's cancel, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So I can make that a negative, but the only issue is that in order to make my second 2x negative, I have to multiply everything in the second problem by a negative 1. So I'm going to multiply my 2x by a negative 1, my negative 5 by a negative 1, and my 13 by a negative 1 in order to make these eliminate. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. Again, my 2x plus y hasn't changed at all. And down here, this becomes negative 2x, and then negative 1 times negative 5 gives me positive 5y equals, and then 13 times negative 1 gives me negative 13. Now I'm ready to eliminate and go ahead and solve for y here. So these cancel, and I'm left with 1y plus 5y equals 6y, and then negative 5 minus 13 is going to give me negative 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 6 to solve for y, and it's going to tell me that y equals negative 3. So now I can plug this in, y equals negative 3, to one of my original equations. I'm going to choose this one because y is already solved for. And we're going to say 2x 
I'll rewrite it up here, 2x plus y equals negative 5. So we're going to say 2x minus 3, because y equals equal to negative 3, equals negative 5. I'm going to add 3 on both sides. It's going to tell me 2x equals negative 2. I can divide both sides by 2 to solve for x, and it's going to tell me that x is equal to negative 1. So now I'm going to write this as an ordered pair. My x comes first, negative 1, comma, negative 3. And that's what I'm going to check. So I'm going to come back to my original problems and check. Two x, which is negative one, plus y, which is negative three, equals ne <clears throat> excuse me, negative five. Two times negative one is negative two. Minus three equals negative five. That does equal negative five, and that checks out. My other equation, two, and again, I'm coming back to the original equation. I'm not coming back to the one where I multiplied everything by negative one. I'm coming back to the original equation. So the original equation, two times negative one, which is x, minus five times negative three, which is y, equals 13. Negative five times negative three gives me positive 15. Two times negative one gives me negative two. And negative 2 plus 15 does equal 13. So 13 equals 13, and that checks. So that tells me that I have the correct answer there. Make sure that you have all of that work and the check written down before you move on. All right, go ahead and write down number 4. Our first equation is 4x plus 3y equals negative 10. And the bottom is 3y minus 2x equals 14. And again, like Ms. Fielder was saying, we don't write these side by side this time. We write them one over the other. My issue here is the fact in order to do elimination, they have to line up. And my X's aren't lined up and my Y's aren't lined up here. I need my X's and then my Y's and then my numbers lined up. So here on this bottom one, I need to flip the order that those are in. So whenever I go to rewrite, I'm going to write this one just the way it is because it has the X and then the Y equals the number just like it's supposed to. And this one, I'm just going to flip the order. And since this minus goes with the 2X, it's going to be negative 2X. Since the 3Y is positive, it's going to be plus 3Y equals 14. Again, the only way elimination works is if your X's are lined up, your Y's are lined up, and it equals a number, and those numbers are lined up. Okay. So now we're going to look to see if anything's going to eliminate. And in order for something to eliminate, it has to have the same number in front of the variable, and one has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. Here, we have the same number 3 in front of the y's, but right now they're both positive. So if we were to add those, that would give me 6y. I want them to cancel. So in order to get them to cancel, we need to turn one of those negative. So I'm going to put parentheses around this uh, bottom one here, and I'm going to multiply everything in here by negative 1. That way it'll turn my positive 3y into a negative 3y so that it'll be able to cancel. This top one I'm going to bring over just the way it looks because I didn't do anything to it. Then I'm going to say negative 1 times negative 2x is positive 2x. Negative 1 times 3y is negative 3y. And negative 1 times 14 is a negative 14. And make sure that you go through and multiply negative 1 by everything. So now if we look, I have positive 3y and negative 3y. So those y's are going to eliminate or cancel. So I'm going to add up my x's. 4 plus 2 is 6x. And then I'm going to add up my negative 10 and my negative 14. And I'm going to get negative 24. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And x is going to equal negative 4. All right, so I've got my x. Now I have to go back and find my y. So I'm going to take one of these original equations. It does not matter which one. And I'm going to solve for y. So let's say I'm going to take this top one right here and solve for y. So instead of x, I'm going to plug in a negative 4. So I'm going to take this top one just the way it is originally. Instead of x, I'm going to plug in that negative 4. So 4 times negative 4 plus 3y equals negative 10. I'm going to multiply and get negative 16 plus 3y equals negative 10. 
I need to move that 16 to the other side, so I'm going to add it. And I get 3y equals 6. Divide both sides by 3, and y equals 2. So now I have my x and my y, and I need to write those in, as an ordered pair. So my answer here is going to be negative 4, 2. So that's my answer. I need to go back through and make sure I didn't make any mistakes, so I need to go back and check. So I'm going to see if I can't check right over here. I'm going to check. Oops. I check the point negative 4, 2. Here's my x, here's my y, making sure I have those in the right order. And we go back through the first equation, which is 4x plus 3y equals negative 10. Instead of x, I'm going to plug in a negative 4, and instead of y, I'm going to plug in a 2. And whenever you do this in class, I'm fine if you want to go through and put all of that in your calculator at once and just make sure that it gives you negative 10. You don't actually have to go through all of the steps. Um, here I'm going to, because again, I don't have a calculator with me, so I get negative 16 plus 12 or sorry, plus 6 equals negative 10. Negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10, and negative 10 equals negative 10, so that works out. So please make sure that you have the check. Now I've got to go through and check the other one. I've got 3y minus 2x equals 14. So I'm going to say 3 times 2 minus 2 times negative 4 equals 14. Again, I always go back to the original when I check gives me 6 plus 8 equals 14, which gives me 14 equals 14, and that checks out as well. Please make sure that you have all the work and the check written before you move on. If you need to pause the video now, you may do that. All right, go ahead and write down number 5. You have 2x minus 3y equals 4, and negative 2x plus 3y equals 7. Again, I'm going to write these one on top of the other. we got 2x minus 3y equals 4, and this time they're both in order. I have my x's and then my y's and then my numbers, so I don't have to move anything around this time. And hopefully most of you have already noticed here that the x's and the y's are actually both going to cancel here. I have a positive 2x and a negative 2x, so those cancel. I have a negative 3y and a positive 3y, so those cancel. So here I'm just left with 0 because there's nothing left and, I left, and if I add up the 7 and the 4, I get 11. Now 0 equals 11 is not a true statement, that one's a false statement. So my answer here is no solution. If I were to graph these, they would be two parallel lines and they would never ever cross. The good thing about this one and the reason that y'all like these so much is if there's no answer, then there's no answer to check. So we're actually done right there with number five. Please make sure you have that work written before you move on. All right, go ahead and write down number six. It's y equals negative x plus three and x plus y minus three equals zero. And again, we're going to solve this one by elimination. Now we have an issue here with the fact that these aren't in the right order. Again, I need my x's, my y's, and then my numbers. So I'm going to take this first one. And if I need my x, my y, then my number, I'm going to add x here to both sides, and I get x plus y equals 3. So now I have my x, my y, and my number. On the second one, oops, minus 3 equals 0. All right, so we have x plus y minus 3 equals 0. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the 3 to both sides because my x and y are both on the other side, but I need that number on the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to write these on top of each other. I have x plus y equals 3, and I have x plus y equals 3. Now, hopefully you can notice that these are exactly the same. However, if not, we're going to go through. We need something to cancel here. Here, we have the same number in front of the x, which is a 1, and we have the same number in front of the y, which is a 1. But they're both positive, and I need one of them to be negative. So I'm going to multiply everything in this bottom by negative 1. The top stays the same. This becomes negative 1x minus 1y equals negative 3. When I multiply negative 1 times each one of those. And if you notice here, 
the 1x minus 1x cancels, the 1y minus 1y cancels, and also the 3 minus 3 also cancels. So here I'm left with 0 equals 0. And if I'm left with 0 equals 0, that's a true statement. So my answer here is infinitely many solutions. So if I were to graph this, these would be exactly the same lines, and you do have to write infinitely many. You can't just write 0 equals 0. Answer is infinitely many solutions. Again, if I were to graph them, it would be exactly the same line. And with infinitely many, we also don't have to check these because any point that's on one of those lines is going to be on the other one since it's the same line. Make sure you have all that written before you move on. You can pause the video now if you need to. All right, so we've solved that first objective. We should now be able to solve systems of linear equations in two variables by elimination. Oops. Sorry, there we go. You should now be able to solve systems of linear equations in two variables, or linear equations in two variables by elimination. We're going to look at the two contextual problems in class tomorrow. That's the end of your video. Thank you for watching.